I will show you just a couple of slides to give you a bit of a context. Of course, this is me, but I don't care. You can find it in the registration. And uh, the context of this demo is about a solution that we have been working on in the last few months to give an example of a end-to-end -end solution that you can build in Microsoft 365 uh, using different kind uh, of uh, UI layers uh, and uh, uh, leveraging the whole uh, Microsoft 365 ecosystem. The overall idea is to use SharePoint framework uh, as the development framework for creating uh, a Teams personal app uh, and the Viva Connection Ace and potentially in the future, uh, much more stuff. Uh, and using a backend, which is based on a .NET Azure function, which will provide hypothetical data from an hypothetical backend storage. Of course, this is just a demo, so data will be uh, still fake data, but you will be able to see the whole uh, uh, journey. Uh, of course, we need to have a secure API in the backend, so we secured it with Azure Active Directory from an authentication and from an authorization point of view. And the uh, interesting part of the story, in my opinion, is that the API that we have uh, built uh, is not only for SharePoint Framework, but actually you can use it from whatever platform you like, including, for example, the Power Platform. So you can create a Power Platform connector and you can create a Flow or a Power App and still consume the same API that you are consuming from SharePoint Framework. And I think this is really powerful. So that said, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you step by step what you should do to achieve this goal. First of all, this is the demo I'm going to talk about. We already have a couple of uh, other demos registered in this uh, uh, section of uh, uh, community calls uh, where you can see how we have built uh, the UI in uh, Teams and in Viva Connections. Today, we focus fully on the uh, backend uh, API uh, implementation. The solution is available as an open source one on the uh, sample solution gallery under adoptionmicro.com and you can find it under solution, sample solution gallery and then you can search for it. But you will also find a, a useful link at the end of my presentation. And this is the UI of the Viva Connection dashboard, for example, where we have a card uh, consuming data from an hypothetical retail uh, uh, store company. And here we have the personal app in Teams. Both the personal app and the Viva Connection card rely on a backend API, which has been built uh, with uh, .NET uh, on Azure. This is the uh, Swagger uh, page for providing auto-generated documentation and to provide also support for the open API protocol for our APIs. And for example, we have this uh, API, the Get Customer Satisfaction Stats, uh, which will give us back uh, a set of information about the customer satisfaction. In order to consume this API in a secure way, we need to provide a token. And in fact, you can see in Swagger, we can click on the authorize button and we can provide an access token, which will allow us to consume the API as like as it happens whenever we use it from Viva or from Teams. So let me do that briefly just to show you what's going on. So here I have in Postman, a uh, pre-configured request for a token, which I'm going to use uh, to make an actual request to my API to give you an idea of, what, of what's going on. So let me uh, save the token. Now you see the locker is closed and I can try out my API and I can execute a call and get back uh, the statistics about the customer satisfaction, which is exactly what we see, for example, here in uh, uh, this uh, uh, component, in this widget of the personal app. So in order to be able to consume uh, this API from SharePoint framework within Teams or within uh, Viva Connections, we also uh, needed to configure our SharePoint framework solution to being able to consume that API. And that happens because in the uh, source code of the SharePoint framework solution that we created, we have a web API permission request section, which we configured in order to say that we want to consume the pmp.contoso.retail resource, which is the name of a resource that I've registered in Azure Active Directory and that I will show you uh, shortly. And I want to have the permission scope called contoso.retail.consume, plus a couple of more settings, which will be really helpful whenever you want to do multi-tenant registration in your target environment. I will not dig into this part uh, right now because we have already covered it in uh, other videos that you can find in the YouTube channel of the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform uh, community. 
community. So here I'm just declaring that I want to consume this API and I want to have this permission for my solution. And in fact, in my target tenant, which is the one where I'm using my API, if I go to the API access page of the SharePoint online administrative section, I can find that under the approved permissions for SharePoint framework, we have that specific permission. Now, uh, where do we find the definition of that permission? Well, let me go to my uh, target uh, tenant where I registered my application. And in Azure Active Directory, in a target tenant where I want to publish the uh, custom API, I simply need to go under App Registrations in Azure Active Directory right here, and I need to create a new application registration, which is something that I have already did for my solution. If we go under Authentication, we can see that this is configured to be a multi-tenant uh, uh, API, so I will be able to use it from multiple tenants. And I I'm exposing this uh, application as an API. And in fact, here I have the application unique ID URI, API PMP.contosoretail, and I have a permission which is called precisely contosoretail.consume. I'm also exposing this API with app only, so I can also consume it without the specific identity of a user with the contosoretail.consume.all application permission. Why am I telling you that? Because we have this permission which will be for delegated consumption, meaning that I will consume it under the identity of a specific user, and I will identify my target API with this unique URI. In fact, if I go back to SharePoint Framework, whenever I want in my TypeScript code to consume the API, I can simply rely on the AAD HTTP client factory object that is provided by the SharePoint Framework context, and I can make a request for a client to consume that API. And as you can see, this is precisely the unique URI that I configured in Azure Active Directory. So basically by doing that and by having in the package solution.json file, the declaration of these permission scope requirement, I will then be able to get a client object to consume my API. And then in SharePoint framework, let me go to the section where I consume the customer satisfaction stats that we saw before, I can simply make an HTTP request through that client that I've got created with the get client factory method, and I can target the API that I showed you in Swagger. So that's what happens from a registration point of view and from a SharePoint framework consumption point of view. But to make it even more real, let me show you that when I am in this personal app and I have, uh, oops, sorry, I have uh, the uh, Dev tools enabled, we can see that under the cover in the session storage of my browser, I have the access token that is going to be used to consume my target API. And in fact, if I copy this value and I show you in this nice tool provided by Microsoft Jot.ms, the actual content of the token, this is a delegated token. And in this token, we can see that we can consume the API that I showed you before. And Paolo Pialorsi, so that's me, my current user, does have the permission to do the consumption of Contoso Retail. From an API point of view, you will find in the source code of the solution that we have a .NET API hosted on Azure. So here we are. This is my uh, backend API implemented as an Azure function. And in this Azure function, where I have the uh, customer satisfaction stats and point, I have a bunch of attributes to configure the open API so that we can see in Swagger and we can use it from whatever platform we like, including the Power Platform. And then we have a custom attribute that I defined called function authorize, in which I declare that in order to being able to consume this function, I need a consumer to provide either the contoso retail.consume permission, which will be a delegated one, or the contoso retail.consume.all, which will be the application only one. This attribute will be managed when we will go through the pipeline of the request, because in the program.cs of my isolated Azure function, I configured a middleware and credit to this guy who created the basic implementation that I've built uh, and the other solution on top of. And here we have a couple of uh, middlewares, one for authentication and one for authorization. I will not dig into uh, each of them, but basically in the authentication one, 
we validate that the token that we get is a token with proper uh, user identity and which has been issued by a tenant that we trust. And in the authorization one, we rely on the function authorize attribute so that we can see if the request that is coming into the Azure function does have the proper uh, permission scopes that we need. And as such, very, very briefly, in the authentication one, we use a token validator, which will validate the target tenant of the token that we receive. And if that is a good token, we can then simply store, let me scroll right here, after we have validated the token, we can simply store the token in the context of the uh, Azure function. So that when we are in the authorization middleware, we can get from the context that token and we can say, okay, we are invoking the API, let's get the token and the identity of the uh, 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 entity that is consuming our API. And then we can simply see if the user or the application that is consuming our API does have either the scope or the app only permission that we need in order to be able to consume the target API. If that will be okay, wonderful. If not, we will give back to the user a 401, so an authorized exception. By doing that and by publishing on Azure our solution, right here we have the Azure function that I created, and by configuring the course to enable the target SharePoint online environment or any environment if you are in a multi-tenant scenario, you can then make your Azure function available to your SharePoint framework consumers and eventually to any other consumer in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Here you can find the source code of the demo. You also have a QR code for your convenience. And back to you, Vesa. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. We did share the URL uh, in the chat as well, so you can access thank the you. sample from there. And thank you, thank you, Paolo. Really, really cool stuff. Um, and, and it's good to recap that stuff because it's so easy uh, to use. Oop, uh, so easy to use uh, Azure secured uh, assets within the Microsoft 365 because you are in the same identity or in the same tenant. And thank you for calling out also the multi-tenant scenarios, Paolo, on there. Mm -hmm.